Hello, Mike here. Now, in the last couple of hours as I'm recording this video, the Amazon Bedrock team have made an announcement, and here it is. Um, they're announcing inline agents uh, for Amazon Bedrock agents. And so what this means is that you don't have to go into the service and configure the agent before you want to call it. How does that even make sense? All right, we're going to step through it in this video and I'm going to show you some running code and I'll link to everything beneath this video. Um, but let's just give ourselves some context for a second. Um, so inside of Amazon Bedrock, if you wanted to deploy an agent, um, I guess there is many different ways you can do this. But one way is with Amazon Bedrock agents, which gives you the ability to configure a bunch of infrastructure ahead of time as your agent, and then you just have an endpoint that you call. Um, and you can configure it in a number of different ways. So inside of the console here, if I go to agents, um, then you can see hopefully, yes, I've got a bunch of different agents in here that are already configured. And really, if you think about it, this is just a bunch of configuration at this point um, for all of these different agents. Um, so if I click on one um, and just move that over to the side, if I click on edit, in agent builder um, and again just collapse the test agent thing you can see some of the configuration options and we've stepped through this before um, so we've got the name of the assist of the um, agent um, you've got the model that you want to use the role that you need to use all of this kind of stuff you've got the instructions for the agent which is essentially the system prompt and then the action groups and inside of the action groups you've got the connections off to business logic which is either a lambda function or return control again we've done videos on these things before and I can link to them if you're interested beneath this video. Um, but basically your business logic lives somewhere. But you have to go through the steps of creating this agent before you can call it. And so you can either do that here in the console or you can do use uh, CloudFormation or CDK. Um, you can even use Boto3. Um, I actually have um, here a notebook. Again, I'll link to this beneath uh, in a description. Um, and this notebook code actually steps you through how to use Python and Boto3 to actually create an agent and then call the agent. And um, so just really quickly here, you can see all of the similar kind of steps that we just saw inside of the console. So you've got the name, um, you've got the instruction, which is essentially, again, the system prompt. Um, but then you have to do things like set up an IAM policy um, for your IAM role with your trust policy and all that kind of stuff. You then have to go ahead and create the agent, but you're still not done at that point. Um, at the point where you've created an agent, you can go ahead and grab back an agent ID, which is what this code does, but then you have to prepare the agent and get yourself an alias and a version and do all this kind of stuff, which is great if what you're doing is a production deployment. But if what you're doing is something a little bit more ad hoc and experimenting, or if you're trying to create an agent dynamically on the fly, then this actually is a little bit more tricky. It takes some time. Um, and your code essentially needs to do all of this kind of stuff in the back. It's just not really doable. So that's where this announcement comes in of inline agents, because what it means is as you're calling the agent, you're defining the agent at the same time. So with one API call, you can define what you want, the, how you want the agent to behave and also call it, which means that everything can be dynamic. Um, so if you look at this announcement post here and you click on the developer's guide, I've got it open here, um, then it does actually list a few different um, use case ideas that they have. So like I kind of suggested, so con conduct rapid experimentation by trying out various agent features with different configurations. So essentially, you can put code inside of a notebook and you don't have to do all of this pre-deployment. Makes sense? And dynamically invoke an agent to perform specific tasks without creating new agent versions. I think this is actually really interesting here. So we could actually have um, your code, which could itself be using some sort of generative capability, define the way you want the agent to be. So maybe it could write things like the system prompt on the fly. That's pretty interesting. Um, and what does it say here? Run simple queries um, or use code interpreter. Now we've looked at code interpreter before. I've made a video about that. And code interpreter is essentially a built-in tool. So for agents, agents use tools or, or actions as uh, Bedrock call them. Um, and these tools are the things that go and do things. And so you can connect into APIs and to whatever code you have. Code interpreter is a built-in tool which is available to your agent inside of Amazon Bedrock to do um, 
running of Python code. So you can give it a whole bunch of data and it can sort of munch that around and do some calculations or it can um, plot some graphs and do that kind of thing. So um, doing this, uh, yeah, you, you would have to actually set up an entire agent to do that. Um, but now you could basically in one API call use code interpreter. Let's go and have a look at doing just that. Um, if I go into the Boto3 documentation, so the code that I've written here that we're gonna look at um, is written in uh, Python, um, and obviously that's abstracted away from the API. So most languages will do this in the same kind of way. Python is my language of choice. So here's invoke inline agent, um, and here is the uh, structure that you send in. So it's just this one command, which is invoke inline agent, and then you get to pass in the whole configuration of your agent. So if you've got a really complicated and big agent, you probably don't wanna do this. If you've got something running in production at production scale, you probably don't want to do this. You probably want to do it the same way that you would do it previously to this announcement. But if you want to experiment or do some funky cool things, maybe you do want to do this. Um, so um, the values that you pass into this API are very familiar to you if you've worked with agents before. So you've got the action group executor, whether you're going to do return control or a Lambda function ARN, um, obviously the name, um, the API schema, the description of it there, um, which is just the description which is written for you because this is the description of the action group. So basically you can set up your action group. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use code interpreter. It's a sort of cheater's way to make not very much code, but it actually work. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And there's some other settings down here as well. So you can set up encryption, tracing, sessions, um, guardrail configuration, everything that you would expect to be able to configure or maybe almost everything that you'd expect to be able to configure on a regular agent. Um, you can basically call at runtime um, with this inline invocation. Um, so we've got all the various bits and pieces here and knowledge bases and all that kind of stuff. Okay, let's take a look at some code. Um, and this is much simpler. But before you run this code, um, well, two things actually. reInvent's coming up. There's going to be lots of things like this happening around reInvent, and I'll make videos just like this. So if you're enjoying this, then please give it a like, but also subscribe to this channel, click the bell notification so that you get notified when more videos like this drop. The second thing that you need to do, which maybe is just as important, is if you're running this code or code like it, um, especially on sort of day zero of an announcement like this, um, is we need to do a pip install um, boto3 hyphen u to upgrade boto3 to the latest version so that my boto3 version has access to the API that we're looking to call. I'm going to run this. It's already there. It's already satisfied. And if I look at the version, it's uh, boto3 1.35.69 is the version that I've got today. You'll need at least that version number in order to run this code. All right, let's get rid of that and have a look at the code that I've got here. So I'm going to import the Boto3 library and I'm going to set myself up with a Boto3 client object for the Bedrock agent runtime. Um, so I've done this kind of thing before. I'm working in the US West 2 region. I've got all my permissions set up. I've got access to the model that I want to use all already, and so I can go ahead and call this. So that's giving me my client, and then this is all I need to do. So this is the subset of what we just saw in the documentation. Basically, it's the minimum code that I could write to sort of prove that this works. Um, so I'm calling the, with my client the invoke inline agent. Um, this is my action group configuration. I'm kind of cheating here because I'm using the code interpreter as a built-in tool. So all a lot of the parameters are sort of built into this and I don't have to redefine them myself. But if you wanted to call out to a Lambda function or if you wanted to uh, con call out to return control, then you'd put all your configuration in here just as you've done before if you've used agents in this way. Um, I have enable trace on, I have end session off, so that I could continue the conversation if I want. Um, with enable trace, by the way, it's going to just spit out all of the agentic reasoning um, into, uh, well, into my notebook so that I can see what it's doing. Um, again, if I was productionizing this, I probably wouldn't have that, but this is kind of experimental. Um, the foundation model I'm using. So I'm using Claude 3 Sonnet, not the latest, but it's fine. Um, and here is my input text. So this is the ask that I have of my model. This is essentially my, my prompt. So calculate the square root of 169 
added to the sum of the Fibonacci sequence up to 321. Not something I necessarily want, but I want to make sure I'm asking a question that a large language model itself wouldn't know the answer to. Um, this will essentially force it to do a calculation. It can use Code Interpreter for that. Um, then we have the instruction. So this is the system prompt which we have, or the part of the system prompt that we have for the agent. And it says, you are a helpful assistant who can perform complex calculations and return the outputs from running Python code just in case it needed to know. Um, and it will also have information inside of its internal workings of how to get to the code interpreter. Um, the last thing we need, and this is it, the last thing we need is a session ID. We want to set this session ID to something. I'm setting it to session one. Really, you'd set this to some sort of random GUID or something um, so that I could come back and talk to this um, agent again, because it will maintain a state. If if um, end session hasn't been set to true, and if we haven't reached a timeout, then the session will remain there and we can come back to it and talk to it. This is agentic workflow stuff. All right, so that's it. That's, that's all I need to do to call invoke inline agent. Um, I then back from that response can get myself the completion. If you want more details about this, then take a look at the documentation page in Boto3 we were just looking at. It'll show you what that's going to look like. Um, I'm going to to grab that out as an event stream. I'm calling it event stream. And then I'm going to iterate over that until it's finished, until the agent has responded in completely. So let's just press run. Um, and here we go. Um, and so this is now, because trace is enabled, we're going to see all of the trace information as it's running this agent. Let's take a look at what's going on behind the scenes. Um, so if I just scroll over a little bit, it's a little tricky to see, but if you run this code, you can pick your way through it. You're a helpful agent assistant. That's our system prompt. And it says, OK, to ca calculate the square root of 169, add it to the sum of the Fibonacci sequence. I will follow um, the same steps as before. OK, I've been caught out um, because I used session one running this just one or two moments ago, um, it's actually the same session. But there you go. It's proving that the agentic workflow works. So the agent is sat there in background going, why are you asking me this question again? Anyway, um, and so it's got its thinking stuff here. It's obviously using anthropic models, which enjoy having this um, thinking tag. Um, and where have we got here? If I scroll back here, we've got the code interpreter invocation input. Oh, here, here we go. So we can see the actual code. Obviously, it's all in one line with line breaks in it. But you can see the actual Python code that it's created in order to try and figure out the answer. Anyway, you see the point is that the, there is an agentic workflow happening here. And if we scroll right to the bottom, the output chunk is the square root of 169 added to the sum of the Fibonacci sequence up to 321 is 622. Is that right? Let me know in the comments below. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. Like I said, reInvent is coming up, so expect many more videos like this. Please do subscribe to this channel, give this video a like, and until the next time, I'll see you in the next video.